Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are bundling up because we are going to be hitting the snow tracks way out in the frigid. We're going to be running some dog sleds. Today we're going to be racing in a game called Snow Tales. This is a card playing manipulating game where you're trying to obviously get to the finish of the race. Many different tracks, different things can happen. How much do I want my dogs to pull? Where's my break? Cool things from two to five players. This is a reprint from the Fragor Games edition. This is new from Renegade Games, just reprinted this. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Now this isn't one of the official races, it would be much longer than this, but this will show you how the game works. Essentially it's a race game you're trying to get from the start all the way around to be the first one to finish. Now everyone starts with a sled of their color, and this is a board, these are hard printed on here. You have a dog of three, a dog of three, and you start with a break of three. Now over the course of the game these breaks are going to get swapped out for different breaks of different magnitude, and everyone starts with the same identical deck, but the deck of their color, and all of them are the same between the color. They all basically have numbers one through five, and there's four of each number. What you're going to do is you're going to shuffle your deck, and you're going to draw up to five cards. Now these would be secret in your hands, but for the video I'm putting them on the table, on your turn you're going to do one thing. First you're going to play a card or multiple cards. And when I say that is, if you play a card, um, you can place it either on one of these two dogs, or you can just kind of discard it down here and change this to a break of four. Now, you can play more than one card, but only if the cards are the same value. For example, I have two ones here. If I wanted to, I could put two ones here. Or I could put a one here and a one on the break, or I can simply just still use one of those. So you can play up to three cards because there's three spots, and if you play more than one they have to be the same number. Other than that you're just basically playing one card and then moving uh, your sled. So let's talk about this. I have a game that's kind of in motion. So let's say we have a game after like the first move or whatever, we have this. Now, uh, what happens is after everyone's moved in a round, you go first player, whoever's in first place goes first, then second, then third, then fourth. And if they're tied like this, whoever's on the inside track to the next corner is first. So in this case, this is a corner to the right up here, and so red would be first, then yellow, then blue, and then black. Also notice that on the left side of the tracks, there's a yellow flag, and on the right side of the flag, uh, track, there's a red flag. And it also has those flags on your sled, so you can help orient if you're not facing the exact way your sled is on there. It helps you orient that. Now let's say I place a card. Now there would have been cards already because we would have already have placed one from the first turn. But let's just say, let, let's just take this. Now let's say I do this. You can actually place the same number on one of your dogs. So what this says is we take the dog's total strength. It's three on the left and three on the right. That's a total of six. Then we subtract how much brake power we have. That's three. So essentially it's six minus three. We have a total power of three. Also notate that these dogs are pulling an equal. They have a synergy. So that's gonna come into play as well. So we're gonna move three exactly straight. So I would take my red sled here. I'd go one, two, three. Now, a couple things to note here. Number one is I played my dogs in perfect synergy, equals on both sides. When that happens and you go straight, at the end of your movement, depending on where you are, you can opt to take a bonus movement. Now, in this case, in your, if you're in first place, you could take a bonus movement of one, second place two, third place three, and so on and so forth. Now, I could take a bonus movement here, but in this case, I'm not going to. You have to take all the bonus movement. So if I had a bonus movement of two because I was in second place, I'd have to move two or none bonuses. So in this case, I'm not going to take it, and here's why. I moved three. This is a speed limit line, and what happens is I can't go faster than three over that. In this case, I moved perfectly three, and I'm good. If I move more than three, what happens is there's these damage cards that there's a deck of. For every speed, I went past this. So let's say I didn't go three, I went five. Five is two over three. I would have to take two of these damage cards. Now normally at the end of your turn you would draw back up to five, so I would have five cards. But in this case I had to draw two damage cards and you have to, again at the end of your turn, get down to five. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So I have to get rid of one of these cards out because you always have to have five at the end of your turn here in this case. And I have these five and these can't be discarded. So what does this do? These are cards that have damage on both sides. So when I'm holding them for my opponent, they know that I have two damage. And what this does is it kind of messes your hand up because from now on, even when I'm holding five cards, I really only have three options because my sled's starting to get dented. You don't want to go over the speed limit. It's the most harsh way to hurt yourself in a race. 
Now another bad thing can happen is sometimes you might end up hitting another sled. Let's say this guy was going more than two forward and just because it, maybe that's the card he had and he ends up hitting this guy by accident. So what happens with this is he stops his movement immediately. He'll stay behind him. And in this case, he just will not draw back up to five cards. So he'll have less cards to start his next turn, but assuming he doesn't hit anybody on the end of his next turn, he can draw back up to five. Out of the three bad things that can happen, that's the least of the bad. And the last bad thing that can happen is maybe this guy's going and he just, boom, he just goes off the track there. That's bad too, because if you go over that, essentially you end your movement, you take a dent card, and then you return to five, uh, basically five cards, which means this is one of your five and that's bad as well. Now let's just say I was set up like this. I have a three and three and a two break. And let's say I put a five here. So again, we add these up, it's eight. Minus two is six. My sled's gonna go six forward, but because this dog on the right is two stronger than this, twice of those six, we will drift to the right. So we're gonna go six, but two of them have to be drifted to the right. So I'm gonna go one, two, and as we drift here, we go like this. Three, four, five, six. And you can drift anytime you want, but you had to have drift twice. And it can get a little tricky around the corners, but now I'm there. And that's sort of how drifting works. And that's it. You can just go through a round. First place goes first, second, third, and fourth goes in that order. You're playing your cards, you're moving your guy. You may hit something. If you get through the finish, that'll be the end of the round. If somebody else finishes, it's whoever went past the finish the furthest. If there's two people tied past the finish, it's whoever's on the side of the checkered flag, and that's who would win the race. And one last thing is you might be a terrible driver where you end up with five total damage cards. In that case, you're full of damage and you're out of the race. That happens very rarely though. Now there's a bunch of different ways to create racetracks in this game. This, they're all modular. So this one is just a straightaway piece with nothing in it. But if you use the other side, it has all these trees and the game comes with these trees that you put on it. If someone hits it, you end up taking it off and it's not there anymore. Uh, this one might look like a straightaway, but there could be some chasms where everybody has to, you know, go through to one spot and there's ice on both sides that you might hit, it makes it a lot more difficult. Here's one where, you, again, it's not a corner, but you kind of have to go around some stuff. And on the side of here, it's just more trees that you can see. And then there's turns, of course, left and right bank turns where you flip this. So different ways to make tracks. Now the book itself has seven tracks already pre-made with fun names that you can set up. And the Nutcracker is the one they suggest you do first. If it's your first game, I suggest that. But as you can see, Dagger the Mountain Troll and things like that, there's all different ways to set these up. And of course, you could always imagine and make your own up as well. But it gives you a lot of replayability in the game. And that's how you play Snowtails. I typically like racing games that have a tiny bit of randomness, but still a decent amount of strategy and aren't too complex. This game sort of fits that niche. I love the theme. I love how you're in a sled and you're just going, it's just different, right? I love how the mechanics sort of, the theme matches the mechanics beautifully in this game. It's like, oh, I'm gonna play a card. This, they're even, my dogs are in synergy. I'm gonna get a good bonus depending on where I am because my dogs are working together. Totally makes sense. Oh, this dog is pulling, you know, harder than this dog. We're gonna drift to the right. I mean, thematically it's awesome. Oh, we're gonna apply a big break. We're gonna go a lot slower, but we might still be drifting. Thematically, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Now I will say, I think it plays better with with the more players because you've got that interactivity of going around people uh, possibly blocking them from you know you could purposely drift in front of somebody and stop there so that they can't use their straight ahead bonus if they were they were going to i like how there's a decent amount of negative things can happen but you never totally feel like you're getting totally crushed like even if you crash into someone's sled well, it's not that bad. You just end your turn and you don't drop to five cards. And if you go off the track, it's like, oh yeah, I take a damage card and it's gonna, it's gonna uh, you know, clog up my hand, but it's not the end of the world. You can even do okay with one or two or maybe even three damage cards, especially if you're getting them towards the end of the game and you already have the cards you think you need. So there's a little bit of a push your luck element there. I was like, ah. Uh, and then there's a lot of forward thinking. It's like, huh, I've got a couple of fives, but I really wanna save these for later when I can, you know, a turn before that, I could put the break on one, and then the next turn I could throw the double fives and just go shooting down towards the end, but you gotta make sure you're not doing it around the speed limit. So that's the other cool thing is, you can't just take one strategy and go low break, high go, go, because you've got that speed limit, and that thing really hurts you if you go over it. So it really makes you massage things. I like how it's simple, this, but yet there's a lot of depth there as to what to pick, what to, what, you know, what to manipulate, and when to do that. So it's overall, it's a great racing game, family style game. Now I will say that 
This is very high on what I call my depth to complexity ratio, which is the depth is good. It's very high with a very little complexity. You're just playing a card, you're moving your sled. But it's the thought that goes in there that makes this game much deeper than you think it may appear. And with that being said, I wouldn't say this is a gateway game because typically in gateway games, you want them to have fun right off the bat and, and still have a lot of good decisions. This game's fun and you will have fun your first, even your first time playing it, but you won't quite get the feeling of like, what should I be doing? How should I be doing this? Until you finish a whole game and you're like, oh, I get how that kind of works now. And so I would call this like a gateway plus or a next step game. It's perfect for that. Someone who's kind of dabbled in some games a little bit, but wants sort of something a little bit more complex, but still simple. Excellent family weight game. Says 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, I think it's more like 30 minutes, 30 to 45 tops there. Great racing game. Good amount of luck with the cards, but good amount of depth, but it's simple. That's, uh, that is Snow Tales from Renegade Games. I'm gonna try something new here. Anytime I have a game and I'm gonna keep it in my collection, which doesn't happen very often anymore, you may not know that I'm also a saxophone player, music producer, uh, and, and do a lot of things around music. So I thought in a creative, a personal way, I'd like to give a sort of an exclamation point when I am going to keep a game, and we're just going to call it the Game Boy Geeks Jam. And I'll do this on my saxophone anytime I keep a game. Here's one for this one. <laughs> 